Hello and welcome to Soil Shepherd's Regenerative Landscaping Channel. I want to start this video by sharing an observation. I've noticed that plants are often selected for the wrong reasons. Plants are selected in the store when they are looking their best without considerations to their needs and how they would fit into your landscape throughout the year. In this video, I'll take a different approach. First, consider your preferences along with the goals and needs of your landscape to compare with the goals, needs, and wants of Father Gilla. Think of it like a dating app. This is the only way to ensure your relationship together will stand the test of time. The order will go like this. I'll start with the top five reasons Father Gilla is so desirable. At this point, hopefully there's a spark and I've piqued your interest. Next, before things start he to heat up, we'll see if Father Gilla lives in your area. If not, don't worry. I know Father Gilla's cousin who travels up and down the East Coast. I'll share more when we get to this section. Next, I'll cover preferences so you know what is needed for Father Gilla to thrive and to ensure you can meet those needs. Lastly, if you're still watching at this point, then I'm assuming it's time for an introduction. In this last section, I'll share botanical and alias names so you can find this shrub at a nursery near you. Okay, enough small talk. I'm going to start with the number one reason to consider Father Gilla. It's easy on the eyes and it has multiple seasons of interest. Check out these pictures in spring bloom. Talk about letting it all hang out. Father Gillow's incredible flowers, which can reach up to three inches, are standouts considering they appear before the leaves. As we move into summer, the leaves start to appear as you can see in this picture. Later in the fall, Father Gillow pops again as the leaves turn red. Okay, off to a fast start. Up next is wildlife. Father Gillow isn't only easy on human eyes, wildlife loves it too. Flowers attract butterflies and other pollinators, and the seeds are eaten by birds and small mammals. To note, Father Gilla will seed in the fall, but the fruit is generally insignificant, especially with the red leaves stealing the show. For the third benefit, let's look at who is not in love with Father Gilla. Both deer and rabbits are not known to cause damage, which makes this shrub more desirable to many homeowners. And speaking of relief, check out number four. Father Gill is considered to be disease free. I will mention that in the wrong soil, which for Father Gill is alkaline soil, then the leaves may get chlorosis, which is a yellowing of the leaves. The last benefit, as if you need another reason, is this shrub is generally maintenance free. Father Gill will slowly spread with suckers, which are easily snipped to keep Father Gill in place. Next up, it's time for that difficult transition. I have you wanting more, and now I may have to share that this match is not meant to be. Take a look at the map, and you can see that Father Gilla is native to the southeast. This is the area where Father Gilla is going to do the best. To note, I do see Father Gilla frequently in the Delaware area, as climate change continues to impact plants, but this is outside its native area. Now, if you live outside Father Gilla's range, hang in there for one more minute. I want to quickly introduce you to Father Gilla's cousin, Witch Hazel. Here you can see Hamamelis virginiana, which is native to the entire East Coast. I don't want to stray too far in this video, but I do feel like this is an important introduction. If you would like a video on Witch Hazel, leave a comment and I'll cover it in a separate video. Okay, this next part is the last consideration to determine if Father Gilla is right for you. Without getting too far out there with the analogies, there are two Father Gilla brothers. The first is a dwarf variety whose native area spans North Carolina to Florida. It grows three feet tall and wide and prefers swampy areas, which gives it the ability to handle wet feet and periods of drought. The other brother grows more inland, including Tennessee, Arkansas, and Georgia, in the Appalachians where it can be found along stream banks. This native or this variety grows larger, reaching a maximum height of 15 feet, but it more commonly reaches six to 10 feet tall and wide. At this point, I hope you feel like you know Father Gilla, and if you're still watching, then it's time for an introduction. Our dwarf variety is Father Gilla gardenia, with several alias names, including Dwarf Father Gilla, Coastal Father Gilla, or Dwarf Witch Alder. The larger variety is Father Gilla major, which goes by witch alder or mountain witch alder. Lastly, I want to finish with one fun fact or a final introduction. 
This plant gets its name from the England or from the English physician and plant collector, Dr. John Fothergill, who was known for introducing American plants to Britain in the late 1700s. Thank you so much for watching. I hope I helped you find a shrub that will thrive in your landscape, or hopefully I shared information so you know this plant is not a match. In this case, know there are countless other native flowers in the field that will be the perfect match for you. Thanks again for watching and check out our other videos to find the right plant for you.